Okay, so today's transformative lesson on transformations of the sinusoidal function. Right? <laughs> Part A, y equals a sine theta. So what happens when we have an a? Well, really, how did, if you think about how did that a come to be there, we would have replaced y with y over a. The resulting equation is, so we would write that as y equals a sine theta. Oh, wait. The resulting equation is, oh, sorry, y over a is equal to sine theta, which can be expressed as y equals a sine theta. The graph of y equals a sine theta is the graph of y equals sine theta. What kind of stretch? Vertical. By a factor of <clears throat> by a factor of a about the x axis. Now it's not really a, it's gonna be the absolute value of a. Right? Because a could be negative, in which case we know something else is going on. So it's vertically stretched by a factor of the absolute value of a. If the absolute value of a is less than one, then what's happening? So in a vertical is it What's it doing? Shrinking. Shrinking. Yeah, what do we call that? Fancy word. <laughs> Fancier word. They, they sell, Under Armour sell all kinds of stuff. Compression. Compression. Right? There we go. Looking. So there is a vertical compression. And if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, there is an, <coughs> I guess, an expansion. Yeah, so let's change it to A vertical expansion. Compression and expansion are the afterthoughts of anything we do with transformations, right? Yeah, I would say a is greater than 1, it results in a, you know, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of, so if it was y equals 2 sine theta, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and then you can say which results in a vertical expansion, right? It's a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half, which results in a vertical compression. But that's kind of the, the last thing you say, right? If a is less than 0, there is also a, so negative, there's a reflection in the in the x-axis. Cross out the features of the graph listed below which do not change. Do not change. Circle those features that will change. Okay, so does the amplitude change? Yes. So that does change. Does the period change? Does the midline change? Midline change? Because where is the midline? It is the x-axis, and we're stretching or reflecting about, so the midline doesn't. Does the domain change? Does the range? Yes. Do the theta intercepts change? No. And actually, change that to theta axis instead of x-axis, right? It's really the theta axis. So theta intercepts do not change. Does the y-intercept change? Where is the y-intercept for sine theta? Zero. Does it change? No. Okay, now, the only reason is because the y-intercept is zero, right? <clears throat> so it doesn't change, but it, it, if this was a cosine function, we would say, yeah, it changes, right? But it does not change. Um, the amplitude of y equals a sine theta is... Close the amplitude. Half the total distance, but. One. So if I vertically stretch by a factor of two, then its range is now from two to negative two, and its amplitude is two. two. So its amplitude is absolute value of A. Amplitude is always positive. Okay, amplitude is always positive. So even if A is negative, you see a negative 3, you say the amplitude is 3. 
and there's a reflection about the theta axis. The range of y equals a sine theta is? Negative a to a, so set of all y such that, and let's do this. We'll make it the negative of the absolute value of a. That way if a is negative, we'll make it positive, then we'll make it negative again. Because if we just say negative a and a were negative 3, then we'd be saying 3. We don't want to say that. Okay, is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of a. Okay, so we'll force a to be positive, and then we'll say it's from negative of the positive value of a up to the positive value of a. Um, at this moment, yes. That's all I can think of. Y equals sine theta is transformed to Y equals A sine theta. All the what of Y equals sine theta are invariant. So what's invariant? Okay, we'll call them theta intercepts, all right? So yeah, they're X intercepts, but they're, in this case, they're theta intercepts. Uh, <coughs> Next page. Or, below is the graph of Y equals sine theta. Sketch the graphs of y equals one half sine theta. What is your sheet? Does your sheet say negative three sine theta? Three. Just says three. Just three. Okay. Okay. And then below that, does it have the negative three here? Yes. Yeah. All right. So you know what? Let's make this a negative to match up with this, and also to throw in a little reflection. Right. We should reflect upon our learning. All right, so here's y equals sine. This is decimals, right? Love decimals. Greatest thing in the world. Um, this is y equals sine theta. Okay, so just like any other function we've transformed, there's a basic starting function. So in 20-1, it was y equals x squared. Okay, and then we did you know, y equals 3, bracket, or negative 3, bracket, x minus 7, quantity squared, plus 12, or whatever. But we always started with y equals x squared. We've started with y equals 1 over x. We've done transformations on it. We've started with y equals square root x. We've done transformations on it. So we really need to be very familiar with the basic sine function. So midline is 0, starts at 0, 0. I think of this as the start point, right? Split into four parts. Okay, Period is 2 pi which if you're watching the video, you can't see because it's off the graph. But, uh, split into four sections from the midline to the maximum, which will be one quarter of the period, right? So period is 2 pi. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. So midline to max, max back to midline, midline to min, and then back to, which is off screen, back up to the midline. That's your basic y equals sine theta. Okay, so we wanted to graph y equals one half sine theta. So what's going to happen? What's it going to look like? One half. That's one half. We need one half. So now I have to use x. I can't use theta because this graphs x and y. Okay, what's it going to look like? It's going to be compressed vertically going to have the same x slash theta intercepts, right? So as soon as I type in an x, there it is. Okay. So my intercepts are the same, and all that's happened is the point that was at 1 goes to a half. The point that was a negative 1 goes to negative a half. Theta intercepts are the same. The period is the same. The domain is the same. The range has changed, right? And what else were we graphing? y equals negative, so we're going to change that to y equals negative 3. Sine x, right? So we're going to do negative 3 sine. So it matches up with the table that's below. Also gives us a reflection. So negative 3 sine. So what's this going to look like? So reflected. So instead of doing this, it's going to do that is going to come down, and this point is going to be, well, it would be up at 3, but it'll be reflected, so it'll be down at negative 3. 
So I'll type in the X and then we'll clear off the stuff. Okay, so there's somewhat cut off the screen. Now you can see it, but if you're watching this on video, then. So it's still zero, zero, right? But the theta intercepts don't change, right? The amplitude changes, so this has an amplitude of what? What's the amplitude? Three, okay? Not negative three. Has an amplitude of three, and then is reflected in the x-axis, so now instead of going up, it's coming down. Theta intercepts or x-intercepts all remain the same. Domain, same. Range, change. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, so obviously you're going to graph that using a different color or <laughs> something. So what's the amplitude for y equals sine theta? One. One. So if there's no number in front, what's a? One. One. Right. So this still it's y equals a sine theta. If you just see sine theta, then you know that a is one. Right? Because we know that the basic sine curve has an amplitude of 1. And what's the range for the basic sine curve? Negative 1 to 1. What's the amplitude for 1 half sine theta? 1 half. What's the range? Negative 1 half. I mean, it's easier to look at this and, and just write it than it is to say it's the negative absolute value of, right? Because here we're saying, oh, A is negative 3. It's easy enough to look at that and say it goes from negative 3 to 3. What's the amplitude? Positive three. Ah, positive 3. Yeah. Okay. Amplitude is always positive. And what's the range? Okay, so it has to go negative to pop, right? It's always lowest value, less than or equal to, less than or equal to the highest value. Okay, the fact that the, the curve is whatever, it doesn't affect the range, right? Range is just a statement of the lowest value is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to the highest value. Okay, good. Okay, y equals sine b theta. Within this course, b is greater than zero. Okay. If b were less than zero, what would what would happen? Be reflected in the y-axis. Okay, so we're not doing that. You don't need to do that with the sine curve because you want it because you can just move it around. Right? It's periodic, right? So if I want to, I I can you know I can do everything too without making b less than zero. Um, in the equation y equals sine theta, if theta is replaced with b theta, the resulting equation is y equals sine b theta. Make sure I'm writing this right. Okay. And it's often nice to just put parentheses around that, right? Just to say it's the sign of that something, right? Like this has to happen first. Before I feed this to the sine function, I have to take my theta value, multiply it by b, and then I'll input it to the sine function, right? Order of operations. In general, the graph is the, is the graph y equals sine theta, blank stretch, horizontally stretched by a factor of, mm, yeah, okay, absolute value b, but no. So if I had, if x was replaced by 2x, yeah, 1 over b, right? Horizontal stretch is by a factor of 1 over. Just as with a, a, when it's a y, right, it becomes y equals 1 over a. So same deal, right? Only we can't rearrange this, right? We're stuck with the b as it is. So it's by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of b. Although we've said b is greater than 0, so you could just think of it as 1 over b. Yeah? You should also look at it as the absolute value as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter. B is the only thing that could have a sign, so generally we'll go with one over the absolute value of B. Right? Like the one is a one. So but yeah, the absolute value of one over B. 
Or we could say, look, we said b must be greater than 0. It's really just 1 over b, right? We're never going to see a negative b. Um, if b is between 0 and 1, so if it's like 1 half theta or 1 third theta, then what are we doing horizontally? It's an expansion, right? <coughs> so there is an... See, I think they want expansion, but... Okay, we'll do this. There is an expansion of the horizontal kind. <laughs> And if B is greater than 1, there is A, a compression of the horizontal nature. Okay, so let's think about what changes. We're going to cross out the features that do not change, and we are going to circle the features that do change. Does the amplitude change? No. What do we do with the cross features that do not change? Does the period change? Yes. Yeah, because you know we're we're I like to think we're we're accordioning it, right? Like an accordion kind of. So the period does the midline change? Can you ever change the domain of a function whose domain is all real numbers? Right? So it doesn't matter what you're doing to the sign part, you're not changing the domain unless you're throwing it into a context, right? Saying that it's some time. Does the range change? Do the theta intercepts change? Does the y intercept change? But only because it's. Okay, so y intercept, what does we do? Do the cross up, do not change again. Okay, the y intercept is zero. Although, would the y intercept change for a cosine function? No, because that would be the line of, so, okay, forget that. It's just y intercept doesn't change because you're doing stuff about that line. Uh, the period of y equals sine b theta is. Okay, so let's think about it. So if this were 2 theta, then in words, that would be a what? Horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half. Okay, so then what does the period become? So period's 2 pi. If I do a 2 theta, it becomes horizontally stretched by a factor of a half. So what's the period? So period's 2 pi. Put a 2 theta in there, the period becomes what? Pi. Okay. If I put a half in there, <laughs> 2 pi over b. I, I will not let you hang there in, in agony. That much longer, yeah. So if we throw, two, and again, you could just do it by just saying, look, if if that was two theta, it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half. The period is going to be one half of what it was, divide by two. If I put in a one half theta, it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. The period is going to become four pi, right? It goes from two pi to four pi, and it's two pi divided by a half is what's going to give you the four pi. So two pi divided by b. When y equals sine theta is transformed to y equals sine b theta, the blank of y equals sine theta is an invariant point. So what doesn't vary? What's on the line of stretch? So the y-intercept does not vary, right? That's the only thing that's on the line of stretch. So the y-intercept. OK. Below is the graph of y equals sine theta, and we're going negative 4 pi to 4 pi. So let's go here, and I have to adjust. Okay, so I want negative 4 pi, and I want it to go to 4 pi. And uh, where is it going? Negative 1 to 1, so. Negative 1 to 1. Oh, that'll be negative 4 then. Okay, negative 1 to 1. And we're going to get rid of these two guys. Oops. Get rid of these two guys. <clears throat> so let's just take a look at the basic. This is your basic sine function. 
2 pi, 1 period, right? From 0 to 2 pi. And then we're, so we're seeing two uh, periods going to 4 pi. I like this. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's like pi over 8 for a. I could force the scale to pi over 12. So, you know, like if you're doing stuff and want to check, so keep in mind, if you're doing anything that you may feel like you have to do on your calculator at some future point on a quiz or test, use your calculator. If you're just sort of checking questions, answers, want to get a nice graph to look at, then you can use this. And there's an app for this, right? iPad or iPhone or iOS or Android, I think. And just on the computer, just go to decimals.com. Right? And you can play with your scale here in the settings, right? Radian mode or degree mode. You can set a step on your axis, set a step here. Okay, so all kinds of stuff to play with. And what were we going to graph? Y equals sine 3 theta. Okay, so Y equals sine 3 theta. What should be happening? What's going on? It's a horizontal stretch by a factor of... One third. Why can I not make that disappear? Okay, hang on. So y equals sine, and I need brackets, 3x. I have to use x. Wow. Okay, so there's a lot of them there, right? One is red, one is orange. Where's my with the mouse? Okay, there. It's here. I'll do this. Off, on. Okay. So what's our period? It's like so many of these. Well, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. But here's what you can do, right? You can say, okay. Normally, how many cycles in 2 pi? One cycle, right? 2 pi, one cycle. All right, so let's go here. Starts at zero, right? So we've got one, two, how many cycles in 2 pi? Three. three. So what's the period? It's 2 pi over three. Okay, so if you can count cycles in 2 pi, you can figure out your B value, which we know is three because we typed it in. But Right? But if you don't know, if you're just shown the graph and you say, I don't know what the horizontal stretch is, right? Like I can't read the period off of here because it's, if it was in 12s, it'd be fine, right? Because we would just see four 12s. Or, you know, two thirds, two five, one third of 24, be eight. Eight twelfths, okay? We can't see that because of the scale here, but if you count the number of cycles in 2 pi, you're going to get your value for B. <coughs> Okay, make a note, write that down somewhere. If I count the number of cycles in 2 pi, it's equal to b. And what was the other one we wanted to do? And let's just turn this off. So it's going to be a mess up there. What was the other one? One half? Okay, so let's go one half. So, and turn it on. On, on. Here's the original. This, this is nicer to look at, right? It's not. Okay, so you're saying theta was replaced by one half theta. This results in a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. So the point that was at pi is now out here at two pi. The period of the orange curve is now. 4 pi, right? You stretch by a factor of 2, your period is also stretched by a factor of 2, right? Goes from 2 pi to 4 pi. Your theta intercepts have changed and blah, blah, blah. Your, your domain has not changed, your range has not changed. Okay. <coughs> so given these, what's the period of y equals sine theta? 2 pi. What are the theta intercepts? Just n pi, right? Yeah? We should know this now, right? What are the theta intercepts of cos theta, right? Pi over 2 plus n pi. And 
belongs to the integers. Y equals 3 sine 3 theta. What's the period? 2 pi over 3, right? Now let's, hang on, let's do this. So you see the 3 there, you say it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third, so the period is 1 third of 2 pi, which is 2 pi over 3, okay? So just think of it in terms of, based on transformations, this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third, the period will be 1 third of what it was, and ultimately it just comes out to that. And what are the theta intercepts? So n pi over 3. Okay, so if it's, if everything, everything basically is just a third of what it was, right? I mean, so the intercepts are one third of what they would normally have been. And n belongs to the integers. Okay, so again, you're just looking at that saying horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. The period is going to be one-third of what it was. The intercepts will be one-third of what they were. Half sine theta. Okay. So horizontal stretch by a factor of two, which gives you, in essence, you can think of two pi over one-half, right, which is four pi. Like this is how you would calculate it, right, without doing So you can do it a couple of ways. Say horizontal stretch by a factor of two is two times two pi. Or it's two pi over b. Right, you're going to come to know, and I think it might even say on your formula sheet, it might not, the period is 2 pi over b. Does it say period is 2 pi over b? Uh, no. I, I lobbied to get that in. On, it's on the 30-2 formula sheet. I had to lobby for that, but, but they put it on there. You guys don't get it. So the okay. what is? The period is 2 pi over b. Or... 360 degrees divided by B if it's in uh, degrees. Okay, it really, it's the absolute value of that, just in case B were negative. Um, and then what happens to the theta intercepts? So they were n pi, now they are 2n pi. Okay, just do the same thing, right? We don't have to overthink this. Just say it's horizontally stretched by a factor of uh, two. So the intercepts, they were n pi, now they're two n pi. Okay. You don't need to go into, you know, you don't need to fake yourself out by saying, but it's a Thursday, and oh wait, no, it's Friday, so that changes things, right? Okay, stuff just is what it is. Y equals sine of theta minus C plus D. So what are these guys? The translations, right? And they get special names. In the equation, y equals sine theta. If theta is replaced with theta minus c, and y is replaced with y minus d, so we would start with this. y minus d is equal to sine theta minus c. But we would write that as sine theta minus c plus d. Okay. So that's what we're going to see. In general, the graph of y equals sine theta minus c plus d is the graph of y equals sine theta horizontally translated c units and vertically translated. Okay, and I'm going to go with the absolute values again. Okay, we don't know which, but now we'll, we'll nail it down. So if c is less than zero, the graph of y equals sine theta. So y equals, so if c is less than 0, what's going to be in here? Plus c. Okay, is translated to the, plus c? Left. Left. And if c is greater than 0, then you'll see y equals sine theta minus c, which is translated to the <coughs> right. Horizontal translations are called, let me know. Phase shifts. Okay, so we won't say an HT, and I don't think we'll say a PS either. Okay, phase shifts. If D is less than zero, then which way do we go? 
down. If D is greater than zero, up. Uh, vertical translations are called vertical displacements. Okay, so they're called a vertical displacement. So horizontal translation is a phase shift, and a vertical translation is a vertical displacement. Right? We say we're displacing the graph. Okay, so what does not change and what does change? Does the amplitude change if we start doing this? No. Amplitude doesn't change, right? Amplitude is the shape of the graph. Does the period change if we... No. Does the midline change? Yes, right? Because you just moved it up or down. Domain doesn't change, this is all real numbers. Right? Does the range change? Yeah. Yeah, because you just moved it up or down. Yes. Those people change. Do the theta intercepts change? Yes. Yeah. What do we do if it changes? Circle. Does the y intercept change? Yes. yes. The median value, where will the median value be? D, right? Because the C doesn't change the median, right? C changes theta intercepts and but moving it up or down changes. So the median value is D. And the equation of the midline will be Y equals D, right? So when I'm doing sine graphs and transformation, the first thing I look at is the D value, right? And I just say, oh, okay, so then I know that it moved up. Because if I want to sketch it, then I know where to put my midline, right? At the value of D. Oh, I can draw my midline in. Right? Oh, and then I know the amplitude based on, but we're not there. We're just going to see and B. Okay, the graph of y equals sine theta is transformed to sine theta minus pi over 6 plus 3. Okay, equation of the midline for sine theta. Okay, y equals d. What's d? Really? You see a 1 there? You see a 1? Zero. Zero. You don't see anything there, right? Okay, wait. What's a? One. What's B? No. If B were zero, this would say Y equals sine zero. What's B? Theta. What's B? No. B is the number in front of theta. What number do you see in front of theta? I don't see a number. So therefore, it is one. If it were zero, this would say sine zero. Okay. A is one. B is one. C is zero. D is zero. Midline is y equals zero. Okay. What's the midline for this? Y equals three. What's the range of this? Okay. Your basic sine function is negative one to one, right? What's the range of this? So what did we do with it? Vertically, right? What affects range? Just vertical. Okay, we moved it. There's no stretch. We moved it up three. So negative one moves up to two. And one moves up to four. And there was no stretch, so the amplitude remains as one, right? So another way to think of this is there's no stretch. The middle is at 3, and I know the amplitude is 1, so I go, well, down 1 to 2, and up 1 to 4, so it's from 2 to 4. I think online the answer sheet is wrong. What are the theta intercepts of y equals sine theta? Okay, so theta is equal to n pi, where n belongs to the integers. What are the theta inter <coughs> intercepts? Intercept? What are the theta intercepts? It's really theta. Where's the first intercept now? So where was the first intercept? It was at 0, and it is now at pi over 6. Has the period changed? So how far apart are the rest of the intercepts? The same far apart that they were here, right? So where's the first one? And how far apart are they? n pi. 
It's, it's looking like the cos function, right? Well, the cosine function is just the sine function 90 degrees out of phase, or a phase shift of pi over 2, right? So in this case, we've done a phase shift of pi over 6. We haven't changed the period. Okay, so if these guys are pi apart, which is really what they are, then these guys are pi apart, right? Pi over 6, the next one. Well, it would have been at pi, but then you went and moved it to the right, so now it's at 7 pi over 6. Okay. Yep. What's that? Oh. So there shouldn't be any theta You're right. There are no theta intercepts. Jeez, I'm looking at the key here. It's not a good key. Okay, well, none. But if there were going to be some. Okay, so if it weren't up three, that's what it would have been. Okay, so good, good catch. It's better than the key. Well, because this goes 2 to 4, so the theta intercept has to be a y value of 0, right? Good catch. What's the y intercept of sine theta? It's like, it's like a huge box. Good. 0. What's the y intercept here? Oh, that's why there's a huge box. How do you get the y intercept? What do you do? You set theta to 0. So we got to go into here. And set theta to zero and say it's y equals sine zero minus not a theta this is a zero minus pi over six plus three. So that's the sine of negative pi over six plus three. And we know the exact value. So the sine of <coughs> negative pi over six is. One negative one half, right? Negative pi over 6 is pi over 6 down. It's in quadrant 4. It's coterminal with 11 pi over 6. It's in quadrant 4, therefore the sign is negative. It has the reference angle of pi over 6, because negative pi over 6 is rotated down. The sign of pi over 6 is a half, but q4, negative 1 half. Plus 3, so y is equal to 5 halves, right? 2.5, 5 halves. All right, I'm going to scribble on that. Okay, below is the graph, y equals sine theta. Sketch it, so I'm actually going to sketch this, right, because we have to move this thing. Okay, where are we going? Okay, what's the scale? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's very handy, right? Because well, you need to go. So this point goes right. Okay, wait. Here's the first thing we should do, right? Midline. Sketch in the midline. Ah, let's do it in Greek. Okay, draw the midline. Okay, draw the midline. That makes life a lot easier, right? Because all it says is, okay, each of these guys, these intercepts, they just move over pi over 6. So this one here is here, and this one here, here is here, and this one here is here, and this guy, right? Everything's just, so all my intercepts have moved. They moved over pi over 6 and up 3, but I can now easily see the up 3, right? Because I've drawn that line in. And I just have to do the right pi over 6. Just do the right thing. OK, and then where does this guy go? Well, right pi over 6 and then up to 4. And this guy goes right pi over 6, but up to 2. And really, what's happening is just halfway between here and here, right, is where things are happening. But it's kind of easy to do it here. So that's a min, this is a maximum, this is a minimum, move it right, and then go to 2. And do the same thing here. So again, just go right pi over 6, that's a minimum. Here's a max, go right pi over 6. Here's a minimum, go right pi over 6, that'll be at 2. Here's a max, go right pi over 6, that'll be at 4. Okay. So how many chunks is a sine function split into, you, in general? Four, right? 
if you want to sketch it, you just need those four, right? You need midline to max, so mid to max, etc., right? And then all we do is just very smoothly go through in a wave-like fashion. Just do the wave. Okay. Do not be it. Okay. By that I mean do not go like this. They're not straight lines. Don't make them straight lines. Right. That will cost you marks. Okay. But you you can be a little awkward with the smoothness of your curve, but you may not be it out. Okay. What does V it out, if you ever look at the, anybody have those inverters you plug into your car so that you can like charge your, uh, your laptop or something like that? So they convert 12 volts DC into 120 volts AC. And really, alternating current, the stuff that comes out of the wall, if you plugged in an oscilloscope and it looks like this, right? It's alternating current, it alternates, it does this, exactly, right? It's like, it goes positive and negative and so on. Um, those inverters, create a sawtooth pattern, like that, which is fine. You can use like diodes to smooth that out a bit if you desire, but usually most electronics can handle that, okay? But I can't handle that. You may not be it out. Okay, here we go. Everything together now, all together now. Y equals A sine B theta minus C plus D. Is that on your formula sheet? Yeah, it is. So, and here's the di the deal. They do this, which I feel a little more comfortable with, but they use an x as well instead of a theta, so whatever. We're using theta. Okay, they put the b and then they put a... Sorry, put them in the wrong place. That's awkward. Why would you just add... It's here. <coughs> Right? So we're saying, we're saying, do this, and then do the sign of it, right? But looking at that, we can read all of our transformations off of that, right? So if you replace sine with f of, right, and x and theta with x, it's just y equals a f of b bracket x minus c plus d. Okay, the usual thing, right? And remember that if the b were in here, so if that was written as like 2 theta minus 4, we'll see one of those in a few minutes, you have to factor the B out, right? The only way you know the horizontal transformation or translation, which we now call phase shift, the only way you know the phase shift is if it's theta minus C by itself, not 2 theta minus something, right? So you have to factor that out. In this case, you don't. It's in this form. Graph of y equals sine theta was transformed into graph y equals negative 4, sine 2, bracket theta minus pi over 4 plus 1. Describe the transformations in the correct order that were applied. Okay, we could back this out into transformation form, right? Like go y minus 1. Do you want to do that or you just want to read it off of here? So just read it off of here because we're, we're pretty good at that now, right? Okay, what's the first thing you do? Stretches. Is there a, let's start with horizontal, just arbitrarily. Is there a horizontal stretch? Okay, what kind? So, HS by factor of? Give me a number. Give me a number, any number. One half. About the? Okay, about the y-axis. Okay, is there a vertical stretch? By a factor of? About the? Theta axis. Based on, must be based on the formulas that they're very inconsistent because they use theta everywhere except in the bottom where they say it's x minus whatever. Um, are there any reflections? Yes. Okay, about what? <coughs> so reflection about the theta axis. A 
think I'm inclined to forgive any minor transgressions of X's instead of betas. Like, you know, I might cross it off and write in it's theta. But. Uh, what else? So, any other reflections? Nope. So there's a phase shift. All right, so there's a phase shift. We can do PS. How much, which way? Or which way, how much? Phi over 4, right? And there's a VD, vertical displacement, up 1. Or 1 up. Yeah, you can use VD. I think they're STIs now anyway. <laughs> what? Well, VD STI? To, yeah. So VD used to be an example of an STI, but they call them STIs now. Which is unfortunate for Subaru STIs, but... No, but STI... Or is it STDs now? No, it's STIs. Infections now. So okay, well, so it's STIs. Which, which to me will always stand for Subaru Technica <laughs> International. But, uh, for y equals negative 4 sine 2, theta minus pi over 4 plus 1, state the. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to start with the vertical displacement. What is the vertical displacement? 1. One or one up? Well, I don't know. Do we want to write one up? So yeah, up one. Let's say up one. Yeah. Up one. What is the equation of the midline? One. Right? Because the midline was at zero, right? So now it's at one. Okay. Next, I'd like to go to amplitude. What's the amplitude? It's a number. It's A. A is the ampere. Here you go. Big secret. A is for amplitude. D is for midline. Right? If you underline the D in the middle of midline. D is for midline. A is for amplitude. Okay, so it's negative four, right? No, just four. Yes. Good catch. Yeah. I'm going to stop making that mistake, which isn't a mistake. I was doing that on purpose. Um, so I like A and D because they are what they are, right? Like D is the midline. Well, it's the vertical displacement, but it gives you the midline. And A is the amplitude. And the fact that it's reflected makes no never mind for any of this because that won't change theta intercepts and it won't change. Yeah, so what's next? We got period. What's period? You could do this two ways. You can go up here and say, it was horizontally stretched by a factor of a half, so the normal period of 2 pi is now a period of? It was horizontally stretched by a factor of 1 half, so the normal period of 2 pi is now? 1 pi? 1 pi. One pi. <laughs> Stop now where you're at. So the period is, okay, normal period is 2 pi. If you horizontally stretch by a factor of 1 half, which is a horizontal compression, the period is now 1 half of what it was, or pi. Okay, so what do you do? You say it's 2 pi over b, right? 2 pi over 2 is pi. So you have two ways to do it. You can think of the stretch in your head, okay? It's horizontal stretch by a factor of a half, so the period is half of what it was, okay? Or you can just go 2 pi divided by b. Phase shift. How much, which way, which way, how much? Right. Pi over 4. Or pi over 4 right. Okay? So you need a direction and a quantity. Domain of every single sine function ever is? Set of all theta, so theta belongs to the reals. The range, so where's the middle? Midline is at? One and the amplitude is four, so you come down four. So from one you go down four, where do you get to? Okay, so set of all y such that negative three is less than or equal to y. And if you're at one and you go up four, five. Okay, so this is one minus four, 
and this is 1 plus 4. And this is the D value, and this is the A value. Okay, we'll get into a little more general. It's D plus, it's D minus A and D plus A, right? <clears throat> or it's D minus the absolute value of A and D plus the absolute value of A. <coughs> Below is the graph of Y plus sine theta. Use your transformation skills to sketch the graph of on the same grid. Oh, Y intercept. What's the Y? Oh, because that one actually required. Okay, Y intercept. Well, I missed that because it's hard to do. What do we do for the Y intercept? We set theta to zero. Okay, so we do zero minus pi over four, which is negative pi over four, and then we multiply that by two, giving us, so y is equal to negative four sine what? Negative pi over two, let's not. And it's not root 2 over 2. That, the pi over 4, okay? We have to do this before we feed it to the sine function. Don't start thinking sine of pi over 4, right? It's the sine of 2 times negative pi over 4. It's the sine of negative pi over 2. Uh, plus 1. Okay, what's the sine of negative pi over 2? It's a number. One, one. Yeah. Negative one. Negative one. Uh, right? So y is equal to negative four times negative one plus one, which is so the y intercept is y equals five. The y intercept so y equals five, so the y intercept is five. All right. So remember, this, all of this must be done before you give that to the sine function, right? You have to work this out, and then you say, okay, that's my input to the sine function, which if it's an exact value, I can work out, and then away we go. Okay, now, let's grab you, transfer yourself. What's the first thing we should draw? Draw the midline. Okay, draw the midline. Where's the midline at? Y equals one. Let's just go along the line y equals one. This is where if you have colored pencils or a highlighter, you can even highlight the line if you want, right? Okay, so that's step one. Let's, you know, here, we'll give you some little steps here, Paul. So number one, draw the midline. Next thing you want to do is plot the theta intercepts. Okay, so number two, plot the theta intercepts. <coughs> so does the uh, does the four move the theta intercepts? Does the negative move the theta intercepts? What's the only thing that changes the theta intercepts? So the phase shift, okay, well, the period change, phase shift, and the uh, vertical displacement. All right, so we got to think about, uh, I need to change, so here's the theta intercept. Now, the period change didn't affect this, right? That's at 0, 0, so it's on any possible line of reflection or stretch or anything. So where does this guy go? goes right pi over 4 and 1 up. Okay? So it goes right, what's the scale here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Are you kidding me? So you have to convert those to 12. So it's, it's 1 and a half sixths. Okay? 1 and a half sixths. All right, I should do that in a different color. Okay, so it's pi over 4, which is 1 and 1 half sixths. So this guy 
there was stuff happening, right? I mean, there was a vert vertical stretch by a factor of four. There was a reflection. There was a horizontal stretch, none of which affected the, this point, right? Is that the origin? So then it moved pi over four and up one. Okay, so now we're going to take this guy here. Now we have to take into account the horizontal, right? So vertical stretch and reflection do not affect any of these guys, right? Okay, so any of these guys. But the horizontal um, stretch does. So what are we horizontally stretching by a factor of what? One half. So this is pi, so now it's here, right? It's one half pi. Okay? And then it moves one and a half to the right and up one. So it's there, right? Then we go to this. Horizontal stretch by a factor of a half takes me here. Yeah? Okay. Then what do we do? One and a half right, up one. Okay, so in theory, then, the distance from here to here should be the period, right? So what's this distance? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these, which is pi. Okay, wait, the period is two pi, but we're horizontally stretched by a factor of a half, so the period is now pi. Okay, so we're good. To draw the rest of them, really, we just have to say how far apart are these guys? One, two, three, right? So every three, because it's periodic. Okay, so all I got to do is count three. One from here, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, we're going to run out of space. Go this way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Better off down here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so there's all of my um, theta intercepts, right? They're now on the midline, okay? So they're, they're now intersecting the line y equals 1 because we moved up 1. Okay, next, plot your maxes and mins, and where are they going to be? They're going to be halfway in between these, right? Okay, so we don't need to get fancy anymore by saying, well, this one is here, and this is going to stretch by this. It's like, no, it's like, okay, see these guys? Your max is a min, there's a max which is halfway between these two. And there's a min halfway here, and there's a max half, and there's a min, so now we just plot them. But where do my maxes and mins go? Oh, and it's reflected too, right? So a max is going to become a min. Okay, so we've got to keep that in mind. So we say from 1 we go up 4, which takes us to where? 5. So we know that the maxes are going to be on this line, and the minimums are going to be on this line. Okay. Now, we know that the max, this max, which is halfway between these guys, and they're one, two, three apart, so it's one and a half, it's here, but that's now a minimum, right, because of the reflection. So this guy is now down here in minimum. There would have been a minimum in between these two, which is here, and that's now a maximum. Okay, so one and a half. Then, okay, if that's, if that's a min, if we get this right, then everything just follows. If we get this one wrong, everything's wrong, right? But if this is right, everything just follows, because you're going to go min, max, min, which will be here, max, which will be here, and then go this way. So I had a min, so now I've got a max, which is here, and I got a min, which is here. And I got a max, which is here. And I got a min here. And I got a max here. And I got, uh, okay, good enough. And then we sketch, right? So we got all the points we need, right? Midline. So you start at the midline, you go up to the maximum, and down, and up, and down, with a nice smooth curve. And away we go. Okay, and there we are. And then we graph that on our graphing whatever we have to graph with. So let's give this a try. So first off, let's match the scale we've got. We've got what? Negative 
3 pi to 3 pi, maybe? No, wait, that, what is that, 12? That's 4 pi. Okay, so negative 3 pi to 3 pi. <laughs> Get rid of the 12.58. Um, what's our scale on this, pi over 6? And where do we go from? Negative 6 to 6? To 6. Okay, and get rid of this. And what were we actually doing? Negative 4 sine 2 bracket x, what was it? Minus pi over 4? Minus pi divided by 4, and then plus 1. Okay, so in theory, this should match up with what you have. So you got like a 0, 5. Oh, we know the y-intercept is 5, right? We worked that out. So do we have a y-intercept at 5? Oh, and let's do this too. Uh, y equals 1. Anytime I graph something like this, even on my calculator when I graph it, I like to throw the midline in because, it, it, yeah, okay, that looks like the midline, right? So anytime I graph a sinusoidal function, I like to also graph my midline, right? It just gives me a point of reference, okay? And then theta intercept, so you can find that because this guy will give you, oh, look, pi over 4 comma 1, okay? So, uh, yeah, pi over 4 comma 1, okay? It works. Huzzah. Could have been an exercise disaster. Exercise. Okay. Anything else on here? No. Okay. Now, cosine. For y equals 1 half, cos 3 theta plus 2 pi minus 5. So, the only thing we had to keep in mind about cosine would be theta intercepts, which we're not asked for, so we're good, right? Okay, uh, I like to do midlines. What's vertical displacement? And the equation of the midline is negative 5. What's the amplitude? 1 half. Oh, we have to rewrite this. Got to take out 3. So theta plus what? 6 pi? 2 pi over 3, right? Basically, you're just saying divide this by 3, divide this by 3, right? Make sure you multiply this out, 3 theta plus 2 pi, okay? It's easy to write a 6 pi in there because you get confused instead of dividing, you multiply and then a whole bunch goes wrong. Okay, now we can discuss uh, what's next. What are we going to do? Period? What's period? I find it's easier just to be, yeah, it's just 2 pi over b. Okay, it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third. The period was 2 pi, but now it's a third of 2 pi, so it's 2 pi over 3. Okay, phase shift. Left, 2 pi over 3. Interesting, so the phase shift just moved it one period left. Ah, okay, I don't know if we have to graph this, but domain of every sinusoidal function is? Reels. Yeah, theta belongs to the reels. Range. So here's your midline. And how far down do you go? How far down do you go? What's your amplitude? One half. So you go down a half. So let's call it negative 11 halves. Just yeah, it's, it's d plus, it's d minus a, d plus a, right? So d, negative 5, minus a, minus the absolute value of a, really, right? And then how high? 
negative nine halves, right? Huh? So this is negative ten halves. We're going down a half is negative eleven halves. We're going up a half is negative nine halves. Why? You know, why? Why do they? What do we do for the y-intercept? Cos three. Now, I can get away with using the original here because uh, plus two pi minus pi. So y-intercept set theta to zero. We have y is equal to one half cos of what? Two pi minus five. What's cosine of two pi? <laughs> one. So it's one half minus five. Or sort in there. One half one. So half minus five is negative nine halves. Time we have. All we're going to do is summarize it now, right? We're done accepting summary. Yeah, bells are like way off. Okay, in general, here we go. What's the amplitude? A. The absolute value of A. A could be negative. What's the phase shift? C. C units. Okay, and if C is less than zero, it's right, and if C is greater than zero, no, if C is uh, less than zero, it's left. Because if it's less than zero, you'll end up with a plus, and if C is greater than zero, then it's right. Vertical displacement is D. Okay, D is greater than zero, it's up. D is less than zero, it's down. Equation of the midline is? Y equals D. The period is? 2 pi over b. Okay, in theory, we'd say the absolute value of b, but for us, b is always greater than zero. The domain is theta belongs to the reals, theta, and the range is I was trying to do that, I couldn't.